Let's do a quick recap. I've got a actor blueprint, and in the construction script, I'm adding an instance static mesh component, setting the static mesh to the static mesh board we created in the previous video. I have a for loop. I'm iterating over 10 times, and in each iteration, I'm going to add an instance and give it a, the same transform data. So they're all going to be in the exact same spot. So if I drag one of these into the world, what we can see is there, it looks like there's one board, right? Because there's 10 of them and they have the same textures and they're in the exact same spot. So we want to add a vertical offset. And I'm also going to give it a little bit of a turn there. So that's going to be negative 10 in Y. So let's go ahead and set that value here. Negative 10 in Y. And if I compile it, you'll see this updates. And now I need to move them vertically. Each one needs to be moved up a little bit higher vertically. I think about 80 units is going to do it. So I'm going to pull off of my index here and type in multiply. And into this, we will type 80. So I could create a vector and pipe that in. That would be a valid input for this location vector. Or I can right click and select split struct pin and pipe this directly into Z. And when I do that, you can see there are my vertical offsets. Now, obviously, the texture is identical, so it doesn't really work yet. We need to create a new material that's going to allow us to create a unique texture offset for each instance. Let's break down specifically what I mean by that. Here is our board static mesh. If I go to the UV editor, what I'm going to want to do here is I need to move the UVs here for this board all the way so that we don't get any of those lines in between them. And it just so happens that there are 15 boards on that texture. And one divided by 15 is 0.067. So we need to, uh, in our material, figure out how to move the UVs up and down some multiple of 0.067 that is unique to each board. So let's head over to where this current material is, or material instance. I'm going to create a new material here, and I'll just call it M boards. I'm going to select these three textures and drag them in. You will find the same general configuration in a lot of Megascans assets. There's going to be a color texture, a normal map, and then a combo map. The red channel of the combo map is going to be ambient occlusion. The green channel is going to be roughness. And the blue channel is displacement. I don't really need to modify the parameters or create any parameters that can be modified downstream. So I'm just going to keep everything here in the material just to keep it kind of simple. But what I want to do is grab the board. So let me go over here. We'll find our board. Actually, let me scoot this over. I've already got the board right there. So I'll open the board up. And what I would like for you to pay attention to is the visual change over here when I assign this simplified material to this asset. I'll drop it on there. And there we go. There is no change. So all of the complex stuff that comes along with a standard Megascans material instance is not actually needed in a lot of the cases. If you have a material that has like subsurface scattering or something like snow or whatever, then, then that uh, those more complex material instances are actually pretty useful, but you can get away with creating a very simple material and it typically will look the same, which is useful if you want to add some additional functionality, which is what we're going to do. So again, what I need to do is I need to figure out a way to offset the UVs vertically in increments of 0.067. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this unique instance value per instance random which is going to give me a zero to one value that's randomly generated for every instance. And it only works on instance static meshes. So this is one of the superpowers of this particular feature. I'm going to pull off of this and type in lerp. So this is going to give me the ability to, actually I'm going to plug this into the alpha, to linearly interpolate between these two values. So by default, that's going to be a zero to one. I want to make this zero to 15. So this will give me some spot between 0 and 15 based on whatever this happens to be between 0 and 1. So if it's 0, we're going to get this value. And if it's 1, we're going to get this value in any value. And the middle is going to be proportionally splitting these two values. So out of here, what I want to do is I want to get the whole number, right? So 
I'm going to do a floor. So let's say the number is 7.599 blah 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 and I want 7. So floor is going to basically cut off the decimal point numbers and then give me that whole number associated with whatever the input is. And then from here I can do a multiply. I'm going to hold the M key and click with my left mouse button. You can also right click and type in multiply and then go and find whichever one happens to be. I'm going to plug this in to A and into B. We're going to say 0.067. So this will give us a value that is a whole number or the equivalent of a whole number, a whole board anyway, of an offset. And we can take this value and use it to modify the UVs. So to do that, we need to create a texture coordinate node. And we're going to add, so hold the A key and left mouse click. We're going to pipe this in and then we're going to take this value and plug it in there. So if this is, let's say three or whatever, we're going to take the current position of every single UV and we're going to move it this way by three and we're going to move it this way by three. So that will give us a uniform offset that is unique to each board based on whatever this value happens to be. I'm going to save and we should see our planks update here. That looks a little bit better. So there's a simple thing that we can do that will make this a little bit more user friendly. Currently, every single actor that we spawn from this blueprint is going to have the same number of boards. And we might want to have a scenario where we have a different number of boards. So what we can do is we can take this value here that is currently hard coded as 10 and we can expose that as a variable in the actor itself. So I'm going to come over to the variable section. We'll make a new one, call it count. Set it to integer if it's not already. We will select get, plug it in here to our last index. As soon as we compile it, we can give it a default value. I'm going to make that default value one. And then very importantly, we need to click this little eyeball over here. When I do that, it's going to make this visible as a variable count. Now, one thing that you will notice very quickly is even though I am asking for one, I'm getting two. So because we're starting our for loop here at zero, in order for this to make sense, we just need to subtract one so that the user gets a number that they expect. That back. So if I increase this, you can see that we can easily add or remove boards. And if I grab another actor, let me navigate to where that was. This one I can bring in and it will have its own values there. So that is a very convenient thing that you can do to expose variables on your blueprint actor to users to get in and modify. Now, one other thing that we can do is let's say this old boards, we might want them to be like a little bit more ramshackle perhaps. So what we can do is we can create some rotation here that's a little more randomized. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and split the struct pin. It's maintained its negative 10 there and the axis that I want to rotate this on is probably going to be X. Yeah. Okay. So we just want to pipe a random value here. So we'll do a random float and range. And we'll pipe that into our X and we can say like, you know, negative three and three. And if I compile, we should see that it gets a little bit wobbly. Now that's maybe that's too much. So maybe we'll just try like one and one or negative one and one. Compile again. And we just start to get a little bit more irregularity, which can help this thing feel even more natural. Now, obviously we're getting a couple of duplicates there. If I compile, well, it's interesting. I guess it's not that random. I would have thought that it was more random than that. But anyway, you can see we are getting some of those values are recalculating, but not the random instance value. 
So I guess that's maybe not as randomized as I thought, but we still get a nice offset there. So anyway, hopefully that's useful. I use this all the time. It's great for if you've got a bunch of bricks or floor tiles or any kind of repeating thing where you want a, an easy way to control the dimensions of it and you want them to be relatively unique. This is a little bit of a challenge because we've only got 15 versions and I guess it's not that difficult to end up with two that are, that are next to each other. But if you've got like a tiling terracotta texture with little imperfections in it, then you can, you can get a really nice variety of bricks and, and uh, nobody's the wiser, especially if you throw some of this little random values in to, to give them some very minor differences. So super useful. I hope you found this to be a, a helpful couple of videos. And in the next videos, we're going to start talking about fracture. So it's going to be great. Can't wait.